much. Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we continue talking about conditional probabilities. Um, this lecture is part of the um, course of advanced mathematics for teenagers presented on unizor.com and that's where I recommend you to uh, to, to watch this uh, lecture from um, because it has notes on the side and uh, actually it would be very useful if you read the notes first then listen to the lecture then you might actually you know read read the notes again just to clarify certain things because sometimes I'm talking slightly differently than I'm writing and uh, you know it might actually be very useful for you to to have a complete picture from both sides oral and written okay conditional probability um, the previous lecture was dedicated to just philosophical discussion of what conditional probability actually is this lecture will be a little bit more mathematical and I will basically end up with a definition of the conditional probability okay so, um, I will use the same example as in the previous lecture uh, when I was talking about conditional probability. Um, we have two dice, uh, we are rolling it, but in this particular case, let's just consider that we have two people. One is rolling the dice and then tells the results to another guy. And the condition is that the guy who is rolling completely ignores all uh, different roles when the sum of uh, two dice is not equal to six. So he delivers the results to the second guy who is supposed to do something with these numbers only in case the sum of two, uh, sum of the numbers uh, on two dice is equal to six. Why am I doing this? Well, just to basically impose a certain condition on the random experiment. From the position of the second person, he doesn't even know about what, what was ignored by the first person. So, all the results of the experiment which are delivered to the second person are those results when the sum is equal to 6. Right? So, initially, the second person uh, if he doesn't basically know about um, anything uh, which, which is uh, related to this ignoring certain combinations. Initially he was, he was considering that his space um, is 6 by 6 square where the row represents the result of the first dice and the column represents the result of the second dice. So this means 4, 5, for instance. Now, so initially, this second person who is supposed to do something with these numbers uh, would assign equal probabilities to each uh, pair of numbers from 1 to 6, and uh, each one would be half the probability of 1 36. Now, that's in case he doesn't know anything. I was talking that knowledge changes the probability. So, what the knowledge now this particular um, uh, person has, he knows that whenever he has the combination of two dice. The sum of two dice is always is equal to uh, six, which means that out of these 36 different combinations, really occurring are only one five, two four, three three, four two, and five one. So the numbers which this second person gets are only one of these. What does it mean for him from the probabilistic standpoint? It means that the probabilities are no longer evenly distributed among 36 different combinations. They are evenly distributed but only among these. Which means that everything else 
has zero probability and these have one fifth to have the result the total still equal to one right the prob some of the probabilities of all elementary events must be equal to one so um, this knowledge that the sum of two uh, numbers is equal to six actually forces the uh, the second person to consider that the probability is no longer as it was before 136 uh, on, on every square but it's zero everywhere except these five and on, on these five is equal to one-fifths so the knowledge results in the shifting of the probabilities as they are distributed among the uh, elementary events now what is the job of the person number two well his task is to predict the result of the second dice out of two is it even or odd that's all i mean no 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 more precise prediction just even or odd so uh, le let's just say that his task is to find the probability of the even number right because the odd would be one minus this probability all right so again initially what would be uh, the probability of having um, even number on the second uh, dice. Well, events which we are interested in, in this particular case, are all events when the second dice, which is represented by the column, is equal to uh, an even number, which means it's these and these and these squares, right? So, they represent this uh, 6, 6, and 6, 18 different squares. So, again, if we don't know anything about this condition of the sum is equal to 6, then the probability would be 18 times 136, which is 1836, right? That would be my um, initial probability of having uh, an even number as a result of the second dice. But now I know that all these guys have zero probability and only the uh, elements uh, on, this, uh, on this line, only these five, uh, have a non-zero probability. Well, what does it mean? Well, it means that I have to basically do exactly the same as before. I have to add the probabilities of all the uh, elementary events which comprise my event which means all these these and these but these are all zeros except one which is one fifth this is also all zeros except one which is uh, which is another one fifth and these are all zeros anyway so i have only two fifths as a probability in case i know that uh, the uh, condition of, uh, of my random experiment is that the sum is equal to six of two numbers, right? So, condition, uh, unconditional probability, if I just completely randomly uh, uh, predict what's the result of two uh, dice, is this one. But as soon as I introduce this condition, that the sum of two numbers is equal to six, then my probabilities are immediately reshuffled in some way. Well, obviously the sums should still be equal to one. So they're reshuffling in such a way that these are one-fifths and all others are zeros. And now the same event actually I'm interested in would have a different probability because the probability of event is comprised from the probabilities of elementary events. And elementary events have different probabilities now after my knowledge about this uh, uh, process. So my prediction would be um, uh, that I, I will, if I will say that there will be an even number, the probability of this event would be two-fifths. Which means the more I uh, make this experiment, the closer the, the statistics will be two-fifths. So this is basically how the conditional probability works. Now I would like to um, related to initial probabilities of these particular 
um, events. So this is my conditional probability. But now let's notice um, event which I am interested in, which is even uh, second number is even. Let's uh, call this event A. Now, this fact that these um, uh, the, the sum of two uh, sum of two numbers is equal to six uh, would be uh, another event which has occurred, right? Sum of uh, two numbers equal to six. This is event B. So what I have just calculated is the following. I have calculated that the probability of the event A under condition that the B has occurred, that the numbers are summed up, is equal to two-fifths. That's what I have just calculated. But let's just think about different uh, uh, approach. In my original distribution of the probabilities, when each square has one over 36, what is the probability of the event A just as if I don't know anything about the event B? Well, the probability of the A would be, as I said, 18.36, which is one half. Now, look at these two, this and this. These are the only significant elementary events. Why they are significant? Because on one hand, they satisfy the initial condition that the sum is equal to 6. On another hand, they belong to the event which I am interested in. So there is a condition event, conditional event, event which is a condition, right? And then event which I am interested in. The event which is a condition is basically the combination of these elementary events event I'm interested in is combination of these elementary events. And what are these events? They are common. They are intersection, speaking in the uh, language of the set theory, right? So basically this is A intersected with B. That's what it is, these two events. And what's the probability of this? Well, that's uh, only two elementary events. And I'm talking about the initial probability, so it's 236. All right? Now, finally, I'm talking about event B, right? This is a conditional event, event which has occurred as a condition of my experiment. And what's, what's its probability? Well, it's 536, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 536. So what do I notice? If I divide the probability of the intersection, which is 236, by the probability of the event, which is a condition, 536, I will get exactly the same thing, right? If you divide five, uh, 236 by 536, you will get exactly the same thing. So is this... a law that the conditional probability of A under condition B is the same as the probability of their intersection divided by the probability of the conditional event B? Well, actually it is. And I am going to show it to you on a more general, uh, in a more general case. All right? So that's my, this is my example where I kind of um, hint that this particular dependency should exist. Now I would like to, well, I will say it proof, but this is not exactly the universal proof. This is a proof only in a relatively simple case. Simple case is when um, I have certain uh, events, um, certain elementary events, which have equal chances to occur, and my um, uh, sample space 
contains n elementary events which have equal chances. So the probability, so events are E1, E2, etc., En, and the probability of every event, event i's, is equal to 1 n's. So you understand the symbolics. These are elementary events which comprise my uh, sample space. And the probability of each of these elementary events is n. Now, let's talk about one event I'm interested in. This is event A. It has certain subset of these elementary events, right? So let's consider that it has m elementary events and their numbers are, let's say, um, m1, m2, m, and capital M. This is my subset of elementary events, which constitute certain uh, random event I'm interested in. Now, back to the problem which I had before, these are n is equal to 36, uh, e1, e2, en are all the different pairs of numbers 1 through 6, so it's 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 4, 1, etc. All the different combinations of the uh, numbers from 1 to 6 in pairs, right? 36 different combinations. And the probability of each one is 1 over 36. Now these are 18 different elementary events which have the second digit even. So it's like 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6, 2, uh, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, etc. So 18 of them. So m is equal to 18 in my case. This is an event I'm interested in. Now, what about the event which is a condition of my experiment? The condition of the experiment is event when the sum of two uh, numbers uh, which uh, are on the dice equals to 6. So, this is my conditional event B, which we assume as occur, occurred, and it contains other, uh, let's say, k elements. So it's a k1, uh, k2, etc., k, capital K. This is lowercase, this is capital case. <coughs> Just for convenience. So k of them. Now, finally, let's consider the intersection between these two. So what are the elementary events which uh, in which are included into both. Well, that's another subset, and let's say it's L1, uh, L2, L capital L, L of them. That's what we see. So this is the condition of my, this is the description of my um, random experiment. Now, let's talk about uh, conditional probability from the, uh, from the um, standpoint of redistribution of probabilities. So, before I had this distribution of probabilities for every event. Now, I'm saying that, you know what? Event B always occurs. So, back to my original example, sum of two numbers is always six. What does it mean? Well, it means that my probability, total probability of 1, is distributed not among all n um, initial elementary events, but only among these k. And the weight of each one of them is 1 over k, 1 over k, 1 over k. So that's my new distribution of probabilities. So any event which is part of these, has the measure, has the probability of 1 over k. 
any event which is not part of this has the probability of zero. Now, let's just think. How can I calculate the probability of uh, event A if I know that this is a real distribution of probabilities? Well, I have to summarize the probabilities of each of them. Now, each of them are either one of those, which are basically the intersection, it's these guys, or not one of those, in which case their probability is zero, and in the sum they can be completely ignored, right? So only these elementary events, which are part of this and this, have the measure of 1k, 1 over k. So only L out of M events have the measure of 1 over k, and the rest have the measure of zero because they are not part of the B, right? So this is A, this is B, this is A intersections B. So I'm talking about adding up everything which is within A. It's these guys. And those guys which are not part of B have the measure of zero, so I ignore them. So all I have to basically summarize are those which are inside of this um, shaded area. So these are L elements, each one has a measure of 1 over k, which means that my probability from this standpoint is supposed to be equal to probability of A under condition B is supposed to be L over k, right? But on the other hand, if you forget about redistribution of the probabilities and use the old measure, old probabilities, as if I just don't know about this redistribution, what happens? Well, this is obviously equals to probability of A intersection B, which is what? L over N, right? L elementary events, each one has the measure of one nth, so this is L over N divided by probability of B, which is K elementary events, so this probability is K over N, so it's L over N divided by K over N, so uh, N is reduced and you get this. So the formula actually is true in relatively abstract case of the sample space uh, which contains basically uh, any finite number of um, uh, elementary events which have equal chances to occur before we introduce any kind of condition, right? So it's equal chances before, this is the probability, it's equal chances before we uh, introduce any event. And this probability is conditional probability. So no matter how we calculate the conditional probability, from the standpoint, which I would consider more philosophical, of redistribution of the, uh, of the probabilities of elementary events, or using just a plain formula using the old probabilities, unconditional probabilities, well, it's still the same, formula is still true, so conditional probability is expressed as unconditional probability in this particular way. Okay. Now, what's interesting is that I have just derived this formula in a relatively simple case of a finite sample space with initially equal distribution of probabilities among elementary events. Well, um, a really um, uh, deep learning of uh, theory of probabilities actually involves um, uh, infinite sets of elementary events and uh, obviously not necessarily even distribution of probabilities. And by the way, if my number of elementary events is infinite, we cannot have even distribution because the sum is supposed to be equal to 1, right? So we cannot have the same probability, uh, infinite number of elementary events, and still have their sum e equal to 1, right? So um, 
These are much more complicated cases. We are not going to consider these cases in this course. But, however, what's interesting is that the concept of, it, of a conditional probabilities actually does exist in those cases as well. And in those, case, in those cases, this is basically a definition. So, in this case, my finite case with equal probabilities of elementary events, I kind of derived this formula, but generally speaking, this formula is just taken as a, as, as a definition of the conditional probability. And it's really very easy to understand graphically. Here it is. So let's consider this signifies my sample space. The points inside of this uh, figure are elementary events. Now, this is something which I'm interested in. So these are all elementary events the probability of which I would like to know. So, if I know the measure of every ele elementary event, and I consider that the number of elementary events is finite, so I just don't put these dots, but just imagine that you have certain finite number of dots. And this figure encompasses certain number of dots. Each dot has a probability of 1 over n, where n is the number of dots. So this is my unconditional probability. Now, let's consider that I have a different event, call it V, and I know that this particular event always happens. So, what does it mean? It means that my probability is no longer evenly distributed among n dots here. It's concentrated only among the dots within this particular figure B. So, all the dots are here, and what's the probability of the event A in this case? How can I calculate it? Well, I have to add only the dots which are here in the uh, in the intersection between these two uh, areas, because every dot which is here has a zero probability. It's outside of B, and I know that only the probability of the events, elementary events within B, have certain non-zero uh, measure, right? Non-zero probability. So, I have to calculate only these guys. Now, I know that the distribution of probabilities is even within all of the dots, all of, all, all of the elementary events within the B. So, what is my probability of A under condition that B always occurs? Well, basically, it's the ratio between this area, which is area of the uh, intersection, divided by this area, which is basically the total probability of the B, right? So, this particular graphical um, explanation of, of the conditional probability is probably the most obvious. So, all you have to know is which part of the A belongs to B, which is the intersection, and what kind of, a, what fraction of the entire B this intersection actually represents. And the ratio between this area and this area is a conditional probability of A under condition that B always occurs. So that's what you always have to keep in mind. This is this formula actually is all about. So if you know this, it would be very easy for you, if you know this graphical picture, um, it would be very easy for you to understand what actually the conditional probability is. So the condition establishes a new field where the game actually occurs. Now, and everything which is outside can be just completely ignored, these pieces. And only whatever is happening inside um, is important. So what part of the inside of the B belongs actually to A, that's their intersection, right? By the way, what's obvious right now is that conditional probability of A under condition B is not equal to conditional probability of B uh, under condition of A. 
and it's also very obvious graphically. So if this is A and this is B, this is A intersections B, this one is equal to area of this divided by the area of B, and this one is equal to area of this divided by the area of A. And obviously they are different, generally speaking, right? Basically that's it. That's all I wanted to, to, to tell about the conditional probability. I have exemplified it first and then I kind of generalized for all the cases with a finite probability um, of uh, with a final num final fi finite number of elementary events and uh, equal probability of each of them. Uh, and the, the, the whole purpose of this lecture was to derive this formula the formula for conditional probability. And again, remember that my derivation is only for this particular case. Generally speaking, this is, this formula is a definition, this formula. Is a definition of the conditional probability in the most general case, whatever is possible. That's it, thanks very much. Uh, if, uh, if you can, try to read this lecture again in the notes on unisor.com and as usual I encourage you to register on the website and uh, that would allow you to, to take the course basically as, as, as in its entirety including exams um, where you can basically test how you are going, how you are absorbing this information. Thanks very much, good luck. <laughs>